Obviously, leadership has come to the fore at this moment of crisis. You have lived through a number of crises, and I wonder what you've learned in this one. Well, I think this is the most people intensive crisis uh, and global crisis. And first and foremost is taking care of people, being there for them and their families, keeping out people safe. It has really been in 9-11, I felt like that. Um, but that did not have a global, long-lasting, constant uh, drumbeat that we see right now. So it's people, people, people. It was that way on 9-11. It's it always about taking care of people. But this one is so much different. And so what does that look like for you as a leader? I mean, especially at a time when you know, 9-11 was a lot about convening people and, and being together. This is a crisis where we can't be together in, in many ways. So how do you manage that aspect of it? Well, I think this is a crisis that uh, we spend a lot of time in our chair. We spend a lot of time on video. Uh, we've all changed the way we work, but the technology has allowed us to stay connected with each other. I spend lots of time talking to groups of our leaders and helping them lead their people. And our job as CEOs is to empower our talent and help them get their job done. On the other hand, um, we have essential workers. We have 7,000 essential workers uh, on a 50,000 person workforce. And for them, we gave them all a 25% increase for what they do. And we we're very, very proud to come in and raise wages for every one of our essential workers who showed up to get the job done for our company. So it's different tactics for different workforces, but it's really about taking care of your people in a way to stay connected with them. You know, Frank, you've been very honest and and, and you mentioned in the course of this conversation how much 9-11 changed you, changed you as a person, changed you as a, a leader and, and all aspects of your life. How does this pandemic and this crisis, do you think, and we're still in the midst of it, but how does it change you? Well, it, it, it changes me from a lot of perspectives. I think one, um, you know, you understand the family values that you were born with. And when you have a good family, united it's just very very strong and of course that was never lost on me every day of my life but i feel so tight we all feel so tight there's nothing more important than a great family bond um and then i think 9 11 uh and other things in my life prepared me to manage through this um, in the manner we are to be able to make decisions quickly about how to differentiate. In one breath, we were taking down the senior most people's pay. And in another breath, we we're giving 25% increases to our frontline workers. Um, and the speed of that decisioning matters a lot. And I think an understanding, uh, you know, I'm fortunate to sit on uh, Mount Sinai's board and, uh, you know, Mount Sinai was, in my opinion, at the epicenter of this in New York uh, and understanding, even at a greater depth, the sacrifice made by those frontline workers. And it's always been in these crises, you know, you saw it without police and fire and even army coming in during 9-11. In this case, it was doctors and nurses and, and other people in those hospitals. And every crisis has essential workers. They're just not always the same essential workers. And it's, it's a gratitude to all frontline workers. And I think everybody has to see a frontline worker. And that frontline worker could be a Walmart, by the way but they're doing something that was required and needed. And uh, I think it's, it's humbling. It's humbling to someone who uh, is the son of an orphan who wore a government uniform for his whole life 
to really, really relate back to the value of essential workers at every level.